Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday morning service on Sunday, May the 12th at Calvary Baptist Church, England. And our subject from the Word of God this morning is the fear of the Lord, uh, something, of course, which is an extensive teaching in the Scriptures. Uh, but we'll have a look from the book of Proverbs on the subject of the fear of the Lord this morning. And I'd like you, if you would, to turn in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, to chapter 1 and verse number 7. Remember that King Solomon was the primary author of the Proverbs. Uh, there were some other authors, or writers, should I say, who did add some sections, but primarily <coughs> King Solomon was responsible for this. And the book of Proverbs, the main theme, of course, is God's wisdom, which should give us guidance for right living. And the book was written around 970, uh, between about 970 and 700 BC, so quite a long while ago. But nevertheless, the wisdom is still here, and still up to date, and still relevant in, in every section. And you may remember I mentioned a few weeks ago that there are 60 main themes running through the book of Proverbs, and we're not going to in any way be looking at all of those, but I did think that it would be good for us to look at this subject of the fear of the Lord. And this book is prominent in that teaching. And if you ever get a chance, have a look at the, the teaching of the fear of the Lord at the end of the book of Malachi, chapter 3. I believe it's through between verses number 16 and 18. And those verses give the outworking of the fear of the Lord. And they're tremendous verses. Another key passage on the fear of the Lord. But we haven't time to look at that this morning. But I would like us to have just some few thoughts on this subject then of the fear of the Lord. And we'll confine our study to the book of Proverbs. And here in chapter 1 and verse number 17, uh, the scriptures record for us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And then if you look at chapter 9 and verse number 10, we read there, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So in chapter 1, we're told the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, chapter 1 and verse number 7. And in chapter 9 and verse number 10, we're told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So straight away we find that this fear of the Lord is absolutely imperative for the believer because it will help us to have the knowledge of God and it will also help us to have true wisdom. Now when we think about the fear of the Lord, of course, we're not thinking about uh, a God uh, a belting us with a thunderbolt, you know, if we step out of line. We're, we're not talking about that at all. Really a definition, if you'd like one, of the fear of the Lord is a holy reverence for God. It's really a recognition of who he is. It's really a recognition of his characteristics in his attributes. And it's a recognition of what he's done for us. And it's a recognition of remembering that he's holy and he's set apart from us in that sense. And there's no way that sinful people like us can go into his presence without the sacrifice of Christ. So let's remember the awesomeness of God and the greatness of God, and give him reverence. In fact, that word is used in Psalm 111. Uh, it's the only time it occurs in the Bible about us giving reverence for good to God because of who he is. And you've heard me say before, you know, that we should never give reverence to a man. If you ever come across a preacher who likes to be called reverent, you know you've come across a heretic, because that's nothing to do with the Bible. Uh, and the only time reverence is used is in reference to revering God and his holiness and his awesomeness. So, the fear of the Lord then, and that fear and that acknowledgement of who God is, well, that really is the fountain of true wisdom and true knowledge. You cannot have true wisdom, <coughs> genuine wisdom, right wisdom, and true knowledge, and genuine knowledge, and right knowledge, without the fear of the Lord. That's why we find there's so many people in our world who are messed up because they don't have that reverence of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom and knowledge. And then as we look through the book of Proverbs, we find that this fear of the Lord 
enables us to depart from evil. Anybody who has this genuine fear of the Lord and, and the acknowledgement of who he is helps us to walk away from evil. We cannot walk away from evil in our natural condition. As sinners before we were saved, if we were involved in sin and try and walked away from it, we would go back to it just like a pig goes back to mud. That's just in the unsaved, the unregenerate nature of man. But when we have the fear of the Lord, that enables us to depart or walk away from evil. It's one of the escape routes God gives us in times of temptation. Have a look at chapter 3 and verse number 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. You cannot depart from evil unless you fear the Lord. Because when you fear the Lord, you recognize his holiness. He's given you a conscience as a Christian. And in that sense, it's an alarm bell for us when we're tempted to do wickedness and do evil. So the fear of the Lord enables us to depart from evil. Have a look at chapter 16 and verse number 6. And again, the same thought there, chapter 16 and verse number 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. That's a very, very important thing. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So this is a significant subject. The fear of the Lord gives us genuine knowledge. The fear of the Lord gives us genuine wisdom. And the fear of the Lord gives us victory because we're able to walk away from evil. Forget about all the books on Christian victory. If you have the fear of the Lord, you can bin those books. Because all you need for victory is the fear of the Lord. You know, it's straightforward, isn't it? I'm here this morning to try and save you money, you know? <laughs> Don't worry about the books. And for you ladies, the last point this morning is another point, and I'll get to that eventually, to save you some money. You watch out for it. So the fear of the Lord enables us to depart from evil. But more than that, it has a deep effect on us because the fear of the Lord not only enables us to walk away from evil, it also enables us to have an absolute hatred of evil. Have a look at chapter 8 and verse number 13. Chapter 8 and verse number 13 and here. And you'll find in most of these verses this little term fear of the Lord occurs. Very prominent in the book of Proverbs. One of the 60 main themes. Chapter 8 and verse number 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. And so not only does the fear of the Lord have the power to enable us to walk away from temptation and walk away from sin, it also has the power for us to have a holy hatred of wickedness and evil. And boy, once a person has got that in their hearts, that's something significant because that's real victory. And really, you know, uh, the, the Christian, as we have this fear of the Lord, we should hate evil like we hate a rattlesnake. If I see a rattlesnake, I'm going to hate it straight away. I just hate snakes anyway, but I'm going to run away from it. Uh, and the wisdom and the fear of the Lord gives us that same power to walk away from evil and to hate evil. It's significant. Without the fear of the Lord, Evil and wickedness and sin is always going to dangle in front of us and it's always going to captivate our attention and eventually it's going to cause us to fall. So if we're saved here this morning, let's ask God to open our eyes and give us a greater fear of the Lord, which is really a recognition of who he actually is. Now, uh, another blessing of the fear of the Lord in the Bible is that uh, as we fear the Lord correctly, well, we'll have a longer life, according to the Scriptures. Have a look in chapter 10 and verse number 27. You see, you can ditch some of your vitamin tablets and other things, which maybe we buy. If you want a longer life, according to the Bible, all we need is a fear of the Lord. Chapter 10 and verse number 27 it, it is quite clear here. It's an outworking, it's a positive thing. Because if we fear the Lord in this way, we're not going to get into the 
uh, the addictions of the world, you know. The smoking isn't going to give you lung cancer early. The alcohol isn't going to give you cirrhosis of the liver early, you know. Uh, and so the chances are you're going to live longer because you're going to avoid some of these things. And that's what the writer is indicating here. Chapter 10 and verse number 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. What a wonderful little proverb that is, isn't it? The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So when somebody asks you why you're a Christian, one of the reasons is, well, being a Christian, the chances are you're going to live longer because you're going to avoid the excesses of the world. And also, the fear of the Lord, according to Proverbs, enables us to walk in righteous ways. Have a look at chapter 14. And verse number 2, chapter 14, let's read verse 1 and 2. And the Bible says there, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth evil. So we've got a double barrel thing here with the fear of the Lord. It will enable us to walk away and depart from evil. It will enable us to hate evil, and on the other side, so to speak, it will enable us to walk in righteous ways, because the greater we fear God and fear the Lord, the greater we will want to serve Him, and the greater we will love Him. And so those two things go hand in hand, and it's really, really important. You know, you often hear people say, well, I wish I could just get closer to the Lord. That's actually the wrong terminology. The right terminology is, I wish that God would help me to fear him even more. Because when we fear him even more, we're going to be a better testimony and we're going to walk closer to the Lord. And in that sense, we're going to be more profitable in his service. So the fear of the Lord gives us genuine wisdom, gives us genuine knowledge, gives us the power to say no to sin, gives us the power to hate evil, and by God's grace, the fear of the Lord will lengthen our lives and help us to be able to live right. But also according to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 26, the fear of the Lord enables us to have strong confidence in Him. Have a look at chapter 14 and verse number 26. And the Bible says here, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. So when we have a genuine godly fear of the Lord, we can have a lot more confidence in who he is, and the fact that he will keep his promises, and the fact that he will bless us. Really, really important. You know, as Christians, we should be as bold as lions for Jesus. And the number one reason why people aren't as bold as lions, as Christians, for Jesus, is because they don't really fear the Lord like they should do. But as soon as you fear the Lord, and again recognize who He is, what He's done, how holy He is, how magnificent He is, how awesome He is, when you fear the Lord in that sense, you'll have complete confidence in Him compared with somebody like David Cameron or President Obama, you see? Because God gives us lots of reasons to have confidence in Him. And it's the fear of the Lord which does it, you know? It's great that, isn't it? So you'll build your confidence up in the things of God and in the person of Jesus. But if you don't fear the Lord, and we dabble and play with sinful things, we'll never be confident in the things of God. And so what a great verse that is, that the fear of the Lord, well, gives us strong confidence, not just confidence, but strong confidence. And then in chapter 14 and verse number 27, the same chapter, next verse, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And the little term there, fountain of life, means that the fear of the Lord gives us the answers to life. Oh, one of the things I like asking people who aren't saved is, do you know the purpose of life? Why are you alive, you know? Do you know where you're going? You know, do you know the meaning of life? And here, the Bible tells us if we have a correct fear of the Lord, well, He'll give us those answers. 
He streams the answers from heaven like a water, uh, a water fountain into our heart. It's great to know that, isn't it? You as Christians today are the only people in the world who can say, I'm here to serve God. I'm here to live a godly life. And when I finish this life, I'm going to go into the presence of God. That's great confidence. So it's a fountain of life, you know. Uh, I was speaking to several people on the doors yesterday. They didn't have a clue why they were here. And they always tell me, well, I never think about it. They're liars. You know, the Bible says that every man is a liar. And I'm, a, I'm an absolute believer that the Bible says that every man thinks about these things. You know, I cannot honestly believe that somebody goes through life and never thinks about what's going to happen when they die, you know. It's just a complete nonsense, isn't it? I cannot believe that people go through life and never ask the reason why they're here. Well, here the book of Proverbs says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. He's the answer to life. He has the answers. That's why we're to tell more people about Jesus. I was talking to somebody the other day who was very much involved in drugs, you know, and he'd been to see all sorts of doctors and other people. Uh, and now, of course, uh, somewhere over in Corby, they have a little surgery once a week where they give out clean needles for these drug addicts, you know, which is really just helping them to continue. What they need is not a reformation, they need a transformation. Mm. And the only person who can do that is God, and he can do that because of the fear of the Lord. And so it's really, really important. Now, something else, and this is a huge subject. Look at chapter 15 and verse number 16. <laughs> something else the fear of the Lord enables us is, the fear of the Lord enables us to cope with little and is superior to great treasure and trouble. Chapter 15 and verse number 16. The Bible says here, better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. That's a great thing, isn't it? So whatever status of life we are, well, we can still be better if we have the fear of the Lord. If we don't have much, praise God, we have the fear of the Lord, that's all we need. If we do have a lot, praise God that he's blessed us in that way, but let's not lose the fear of the Lord, because otherwise we'll miss out on spiritual blessings. So it doesn't matter if we're poor, it doesn't matter if we're rich, if we have the fear of the Lord, that's superior to our treasure, and it's superior to our trouble. Look at chapter 22 and verse number 4. Chapter 22 and verse number 4. Another uh, great thing about the fear of the Lord here. The Bible says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honour and life. In other words, the result of the fear of the Lord is riches and honour and life. And here Solomon isn't talking about winning the lottery. He was a very wealthy man, but he's not talking about that at all. When he's talking about riches, he's talking about spiritual riches. Remember in the book of Ephesians, Paul says there that we're in heavenly places with all spiritual riches. It's a great thing. And so as we fear the Lord, we'll have these spiritual riches, we'll have honour, and we'll have real spiritual life. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about the Jehovah Witnesses in the question time. They don't have real spiritual life. It's impossible to have a real spiritual life if you're a Jehovah Witness, because basically you're an unbeliever. They may have ritual they may have all sorts of things, and we were talking yesterday about Mormonism, you know, and they believe you have to be baptised to be saved, but actually the genuine fear of the Lord, which only the believer can have, can give us spiritual riches, real spiritual life. So when a person comes to Christ and has the fear of the Lord, it puts a full stop to all of their searching for spiritual truth, because Jesus is the full stop and he gives us these things. I want you to notice chapter 19 and verse number 23. Chapter 19 uh, and verse number 23. And another positive, if you like, of the fear of the Lord here. Uh, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied, and shall not be visited with evil. Chapter 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, spiritual life in other words, 
And he that hath it hath what the fear of the Lord shall abide satisfied. In other words, the fear of the Lord gives us complete satisfaction. There is something seriously wrong when a Christian isn't satisfied with their Saviour. Because here, the Bible says that we will abide satisfied as we fear the Lord. Chapter 19 and verse number 23. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And it was quite clear when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, that he was indicating that all our satisfaction is in him. I cannot understand it when people who are Christians are always moaning and groaning about their lot. My Bible tells me that Paul was content when he was blessed and had abundance and when he was a base. That's a Christian way. And the only way we can have that is if we have the fear of the Lord because either this is the word of God or it's not the word of God. And the word of God says here, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life and he that hath it shall abide satisfied not may abide satisfied or sometimes can be satisfied or can be satisfied when there's an hour in the month the bible says here if we abide in the lord and fear the lord we can be completely satisfied you know and uh, uh, and i know i've spoken to brother jonathan about this and i've met some missionaries in the past always constantly harping on about the exchange rate or the fact that they're not getting sufficient support and they need to go back to america six times a year to raise another few thousand dollars something's wrong there because my bible tells me in our circumstances whatever it is we can be satisfied and praise god for that he meets all of our need and blesses us in every way and thank God for that. However much we have, it's great just to be a Christian. It's wonderful to be a Christian. The retirement policy is tremendous. And it's just wonderful walking with Jesus. Surely the Bible is right or it's wrong. And it says here, he that hath it, what the fear of the Lord, shall abide satisfied. Come what may, isn't that great? Praise God for that that we can be the happiest people in the world because we're the most blessed people in the world. Just two more things here, and there's loads of them actually, but just two more things. I'm conscious of time. Chapter 24 and verse number 21. Look at this. And um, this is good uh, counsel, if you like. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King and meddle not with them that are given to change. Uh, that's a great verse, chapter uh, 24 and verse number 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. And the little term there is quite interesting. And meddle not with them that are given to change. That means do not make companions if you fear the Lord with the wrong people. Meddle not with them, you know. Don't mix too much with them. You may have to have association with them because we live in the world, but don't get too involved in them. And so the thought is here in chapter 24 and verse number 21, the fear of the Lord helps us to choose the right companions. Very important who our companions are. Very important who our friends are. I know many of you who have been walking with the Lord for many years would say amen to this. May, very often our young people are brought down by meddling with them that are given to change. In other words, those who are up and down and don't know the Saviour. Friends are dangerous, folks. Watch out who your friends are. Make sure your best friends are Christian people because they think like you and they want to honour God other people don't and i've seen it time and time again particularly over at corby in 17 years there we saw young people after young people fall because they had got associated with the wrong people and they got led astray with the wrong people but the bible says here you see my son in other words addressed here really to a younger person fear thou the lord and the king, in other words, obey the government and do right unless they're against the gospel and meddle not with them that are given to change. Uh, and those of you who are single here today, make sure that if the right person comes along, they are a Christian. You know, for you ladies here this morning, if you see Mr. Wright over here and you think he's the best thing since sliced bread, if he isn't saved, he's Mr. Wrong for you. 
And the same with you guys, you know. Make sure that you choose a Christian, somebody who's a person to them or somebody who makes Jesus the most important person in their life. If you don't choose a person like that, it will be a disaster. I can guarantee you that. I've seen it time and time again in my experience in the ministry, and I see it time and time again in the scriptures. If you fall in love with somebody, check out their spiritual credentials before their bank balance. It's so important, really, really important. So here, the fear of the Lord, you see, well, don't meddle with them that are given to change. Much better to remain single and to be patient until God brings you along the right person than to rush into something for which you'll have a lifetime of regret. Now, I said to you ladies, I was going to save you some money. Uh, we've already saved a bit of money on victory this morning and Christian books on victory. Here's something specifically for the ladies. Have a look at chapter 31 and verse number 30. I want to save you some money here this morning in these days of austerity. You keep telling us that we're in these days. Chapter 30 and verse number, uh, chapter 31 rather, and verse number 30. And the Bible says here, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, the word favor here also means charm. And so the thought is here, the fear of the Lord for a woman should be more important than charm or beauty. That's actually what the Word of God is saying here. The fear of the Lord for a woman should be more important than charm or beauty because God's concerned with what's going on inside rather than what's going on outside. So where's the money-saving device here? Simply when you walk through those, uh, uh, those uh, perfume sections of Boots Chemist, Folks, save your money, give it to gospel work, because what's actually important is not the amount of war paint we wear, but what actually is important is what's going on in here. It's really, really important that we concern ourselves as to what's going on in here. So for a woman, the fear of the Lord should be more important than charm or beauty. Save your money on all these excesses. And I'm sure that some of you notice, even, even a lot of fellas now are going in for all of these sort of things, aren't they? You can buy everything, can't you, off the shelf? I remember when I was a lad, and some of you of my age will remember, the good old soap and water was just as good, you know? And it saves you a fortune in these austerity days. <laughs> so, watch out, ladies. Just be careful. Of course, God expects us to look nice and attractive. I understand all of that. But we can save some money in these areas. So the fear of the Lord, then, just as a summary, will give us true wisdom and true knowledge. It will enable us to depart from evil and actually hate evil. It will lengthen our life. It will give us power to walk in righteous ways. As we fear the Lord, we'll have increased confidence in the things of God. And it's a life-giving fountain. All of our questions will be answered. The fear of the Lord will enable us to cope. If we don't have too much, and the fear of the Lord will produce spiritual riches, and it will give us satisfaction. I'm saved. We sing that sometimes. I found the Saviour. Now I'm satisfied. And that should be true in all Christians' hearts. And the fear of the Lord will help us to choose the right companions. And for the woman and the godly Christian lady, it will save your money because it's more important than charm and beauty. Brother Rudy.